Welcome to another JJ in the Field. Tommy agronomic tips when you need them the most. I'm Jonah Johnson. Today we're in central Ohio again and we're doing some scouting in some, believe it or not, behind me, we're in a cornfield. And so the hot questions of the last week and a half have been is I planted my corn and beans X number of days ago and for some guys it's going on four weeks in some regards. Um, and up to seven to ten days ago now and we haven't seen much activity in our fields. Normally you know this is the time of year where we get excited about windshield scouting. You can see a lot of crops progressing quite quickly um, but for us here in Ohio we've been experiencing obviously some quite erratic weather patterns from the normal weather which if that's even such a thing anymore. What we've been seeing obviously is in regards to daily uh, heat unit accumulation has been very very low so if you think about our daily temperatures we've had you know, hovering in the 40s to 60s, depending on what latitude you are in Ohio. And then the evening temperatures for most of us, we've been still creeping down into those really low 30 degree temperatures. And it's not been uncommon to see heavy frost just about every morning of, of this second week of May here in 2021. And so what does that mean for the crops that I have in the ground right now? Well, there's many things going on that we need to consider. So we don't want to throw in the towel just yet. We don't want to think about replants just yet. One thing we do need to do is get out and walk our fields and, and evaluate what stands are there and start digging plants to see what's happening under the ground because since heat unit accumulation is a pretty reliable indicator of when we can expect corn to emerge, if you start tracking GDUs based upon your planting date, and there's many applications online and, and through uh, your respective app store you can download to your smart device to help you track that, you can start actually typing in those dates and, and evaluating where you're at. And so for corn, typically in Ohio, it takes anywhere from 100 to 120 GDUs for emergence. And then after that point, once emergence occurs, it takes about between 80 uh, or less, depending on where you're at during the growing season to accumulate different the next several growth stages. And so as we're waiting for crops emerged, um, things that's been sitting in the ground, a lot of growers are concerned, is my crop dead, is it not growing? So that's where we need to get out there and we start next, start digging plants, digging those seeds and seeing where we're at. And for a lot of the fields that we've been scouting over the last week, what we're finding is, is like this field behind me, maybe hard to see on, on camera, but the plants are there. They're yellow, peaked, not very happy. Um, it took them two and a half weeks to emerge and they were under the ground, not to mention battling the cold temperatures. And you think about the air temperature, but then soil temperatures buffer um, kind of in a parallel fashion, but at a, at a slower pace of the increase and decrease. As of today, as I pulled my soil thermometer out of the ground at the two inch level, we're at 67 degrees. And so, you know, that's warmed up pretty good. Obviously we're in tilled ground, some darker soils. And so I expect that to increase on a bright sunny day. And so once we've reached that point where you think you might have accumulated enough GDUs for emergence and you're not seeing anything out there, we need to start evaluating our seedlings to see where we're at because um, several things could obviously be impacting that. Number one, we could have seedling blight, so any of the, the diseases such as uh, Fusarium, Pythium are typically the ones that we fight uh, early on in our corn and soybeans, similar. We also add Phytophthora and uh, others. We want to evaluate those, look for the firmness of the stem. If your seed's still very young and small, you want to check and make sure it's still rigid and not squishy and rotted. Um, these seedling blights can come in um, when it stays wet and infect our young plants. And so the next thing you may be thinking is, well, I have seed treatments, I should be good to go. And uh, in theory, yes, you should be, but there's a caveat with everything, unfortunately. So with our seed treatments, they typically, when they're actively systemic, meaning that once we get enough soil water, they go into solution, the plant uptakes those and absorbs those to protect those plants till they get so big. And then by that dilution effect, we get more plant matter versus chemistry in the plant, then they start to um, dilute in the plant. And so that's about the V3 growth stage. So if we have a lot these extended periods of the shrink swell cycle of the seed, and, and they just, or they've sat there so long without germinating or just been in this funk that they are now, um, those seed treatments can be diminished. And so unfortunately that can let these seedling pathogens um, be, be attacking these young plants. But what we've been walking over the last week and a half, we haven't seen too many seedling blights uh, just yet. So, so once we get out there and we start evaluating these stands, again, we're gonna look for solid root systems and look at these plants and see if they're still practically growing. Okay, so when you're evaluating your stands, <clears throat> it's nice about to dig some plants out and look at them among their neighbors. Do we have commonalities your neighbors to give you that picket fence? So if we don't have, if we have variation in our stands, then that can be variance and yield at the end of the growing season. So you want to make sure when we look, 
Do we have rigid seed? How do our seminal roots, the radical, how do those look? Are they firm, undiseased like these are? You can see our extension up to the ground, everything looks good. Now obviously the above ground foliage, a little yellow and peaked, but because of our temperatures and the conditions it's, it's experienced here, that hence, we're just glad we're above the ground at this point, but sunlight and bright sunny days and warm temperatures are gonna make this improve drastically as these root systems continue to grow. And our soybeans, these plants are still below the ground. They were just at the level about this line right here. So you can see that they're, they're still poking and coming along and growing. But what you wanna look for is that if they're soft and squishy, just like we mentioned in corn, all these cotyledons are firm the root systems are firm and nothing looks diseased at this point. So the seed treatments helped us during this wet cycle. Once these emerge and open up, they will turn green once the chloroplasts start to gain uh, energy from the sunlight and reproduce. And so we're just gonna be patiently waiting. So if you do have parts in your fields that had tissue like this above ground, obviously these necks will be something we wanna look for for frost damage. And then these cotyledons, when they do open up, that active growing point is actually inside of there it's right in the middle there. So that's what we want to evaluate when we're uh, looking at our stands here in the next week or so as temperatures improve. Now what we are seeing in some soybeans is that on some of these active growing points at the top of them, so as that crook comes out of the ground, opens up that cotyledon, those auxiliary buds on top are what's our active growing tissue. In a lot of cases across Ohio, these early morning frosts, we're gonna have some beans that have succumbed to some of these cooler temperatures. Um, the next big question of, of we get asked right now is, is there anything I can do to my crop uh, to, to boost uh, its aggressiveness to make it, give it kind of a, a booster shot? And like this field we're in today had pre-season in hydrus. Um, no starter was used in this. And a lot of times we see guys that do use starter, and especially in seasons like this, uh, even, you know, university recommendations. So most starters, you see a benefit the most in cool, wet springs and you will see crops that will have a much better color to them and be a little bit more vigorous than ones that are kind of sitting here waiting for the, the roots to take off and start growing again. Some other watch outs we need to be considering um, across the, the, the Tri-County area, the land-grant universities are bringing up a lot about the uh, different insects that are starting to see traveling. So our black cutworms for corn and then armyworm moss, we're starting to see a presence of those increasing. Now, even though the traps are increasing, doesn't necessarily mean that there's a huge amount of them out there, but anywhere we've had heavy cover crop areas with armyworm, and if we got our wheat crop out there, we want to be monitoring those for uh, that feeding. And then in black cutworm and corn, typically that's, we see that more in central and southern Ohio, uh, but nevertheless, that's a pest. So when we have slow growing crops like we do right now, um, insects can overwhelm our crops pretty quickly. And so slugs are the other one in these cold, wet environments, especially with no-till conditions, they can defoliate crops very quickly and as these crops are not growing actively to outpace the, the insect feeding. So in regards to anything to apply right now, the best thing we do is we need some bright sunshine and warmer temperatures, and I think we'll see a drastic response to the crops in improvement. Once we get past this cold spell, these cold morning temperatures, that's when we're gonna be able to make uh, assertions whether or not we need to go in there and stitch some seed in or terminate stands. But taking stand counts, uh, watching your depth, you know, we're in where we had deeper planting because back at planting, some guys, it was dry, we were planting some moisture. So you think about planting, if you dry your planting depth, made planter alterations or genetic changes on your farm, those all could come into hand with the emergence uh, period of how long that's going to take to come above the ground. So just keep those in the back of your mind when you're trying to make sure you know, evaluate your stands and how much uh, that you may have to evaluate here in the next couple of weeks. So for more information, follow up with your local ASA or anybody on the PCT team. Uh, for JJ in the field, I'm Jonah Johnson. Thanks for watching.